Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. And welcome to session 6 of Principles of Management course. This session is about social responsibility of the manager. We all understand that the organization as they take from the society in terms of resources and other things they have to give back to the society as well. So let us understand as a manager tomorrow those who are undertaking this course for management practices in the organization, how you students have to deal with the social responsibility, what are the aspects the, which are very critical for a manager's career or maybe for organization at large to serve the society back. Let us try to find answer to this question of social responsibilities assigned to the manager. Let us begin with an example of ICICI Bank. It is one of the largest private sector banks in India. The ICICI Foundation has undertaken several initiatives to empower the poor to participate in and benefit from Indian growth process. As a part of its CSR endeavor, ICICI is now focusing on specific areas of primary health, financial inclusions, elementary education and sustainable livelihood. A few of its popular corporate social responsibility programs are English language training for teachers and students in rural areas, rural self-employment training institutes at various places including Jodhpur and Chhattisgarh, curriculum and text development programs, school and education teacher reform programs in Rajasthan, statewide education reforms in Odisha city, initiative from newborn health at Mumbai and blood donation drives in Mumbai. Keeping the CSR initiatives of ICICI bank in view, let us discuss the various dimensions of CSR in this session. So even in ancient times, organizations have contributed for social prosperity. For instance, Aristotle has mentioned, who was one of the greatest philosopher, mentioned the need for business to reflect the interest of society in which their operations are based. Every manager of every organization owns to the society that he has been instrumental in making them what they are today. It gives them knowledge, values, survivability skills, esteem and status. Without a supportive society, organizations or its managers cannot operate and survive and thrive. Hence, as a member and beneficiary of the society, each member has an obligation and commitment to take effective steps for protecting and improving the society's welfare. Decades back, the sole aim of organization was profit making. They did not care for anybody other than their direct and immediate stakeholders. Traditionally, these stakeholders are business owners, management and employees. Organizations tend to ignore the interest of other constitutions of the society like customers and general public. However, growing awareness among the management on the positive relationship between fulfillment of larger social needs and long term economic benefits of firm changed their attitude. And now organizations have realized that they cannot function in isolation. All that they have are given to them by the society. So for instance, an organization's labor, capital, technology and physical resources 
all are supplied by the society alone. So consequently, management have begun to fulfill their social obligations in their own way. However, these organizations may do so out of legal compulsion, popular social needs or pressures or genuine concerns for well-being of the society. We shall now discuss these three reasons of factors which influence the organization towards the social responsibility. So, first is the legal compulsion that is social obligation. So, there are certain legal frameworks which bind any organization to fulfill the social responsibility towards the society. This can be dis disposal of effluents and waste. The organization has to see that such waste and effluents do not harm to the society at all. So, such legal bindings need to be abided and they come under the social obligation part of the CSR. The second category is the popular social needs or social pressures which are also called as social responsiveness. So, corporate responsiveness to social pressure is also in the form of corporate social responsibility. While we are talking about the social responsiveness, we here means that man while managing the relationship in the society, an organization may adopt any one of the three management approaches. They can either have an approach of tactic, strategic or no action approach. So, under these categories, the specific course of action is usually decided on the basis of the organization's perception of social needs or the pressures. A demand for community development from the public or an environmental issue like pollution, health hazard are the examples of the social pressure. So, whenever you feel that your organization is producing these hazards, they create a social pressure. When the management adopts tactical or strategic approach that aims at fulfilling social needs or relieving social pressure, it is usually called as social responsiveness. So, this is the response of the corporate sector towards the society. So, the management may also decide not to act on such social pressures. The third factor that influence is the genuine concern for well-being of the society which is in turn called as the social responsibility. Now here in this case the corporates may think of some genuine social work for the society. They may think of developing the community at large, opening up of areas like parks, institutions, hospitals, etc. or schools for the education of children or for older people as well. So here the organization is putting in their fair effort to get the society uplifted. This benefits the local communities and societies at large. So here managers carry out community welfare activities without any demand or pressure from the societal section. As it was in the case of social responsiveness, in genuine concern, out of concern and empathy, the uh, manager thinks of doing something good for the society. Organization of this type normally have strong core values. So, it is their core values which prompt them to go ahead and do something good for well-being of the society. For instance, TNT Express which is based at Amsterdam, it is a logistics company, is well known for its socially responsible behavior. It runs a program called Moving the World which involves keeping around 50 employees in standby mode at its head office in Amsterdam. The task of this group is to reach out to the people affected by disaster anywhere in the world within 48 hours of occurrence of the disaster. So, students such initiatives by the organization play a vital role in letting us understand that how social responsibility can be of great help to the society. Moving further, let us try to define the term corporate social responsibility. 
social responsibility can be defined as a business intention beyond its legal and economic obligations to do the right things and act in ways that are good for the society. Social responsibility of business encompasses the economical, ethical, legal and discretionary expectations that the society has of organization at a given point of time. So we may define CSR as an obligation of an organization to the society to improve the quality of life, the community in general and stakeholders of business in particular. And further, the definition of CSR in essence can be that it is a responsiveness of business houses to the expectation of the stakeholders and their endeavors in order to develop a positive impact on the stakeholders through their actions. And these actions are nothing but the CSR initiatives that the organizations must take. Corporate social responsibility is the organization's obligation to maximize the positive impact and minimize the negative effects in being a contributing member to the society with a concern for society's long term needs and wants. Further, another definition of corporate social responsibility is about the way businesses take account of their economic social and environmental impacts in the way they operate, maximize the benefits and minimize the downsides. So when we define corporate social responsibility, if genuinely the organization is taking care of reducing the ill effects that the organizational processes may create towards the society, that is also in one way a very big corporate social responsibility that the organizations can serve back to the society. Let us now try to understand that CSR has certain concerns. So CSR expects organizations to go beyond their legal requirements in serving the society within their given resources. So the constraint here is that the resources that the organizations have are quite limited in magnitude. So in fact CSR is an organization's moral responsibility to engage in activities that protect and promote the welfare of the society. It is also an organization's obligation towards people who are affected by its actions and decisions. Now what happens? CSR expects organizations to go beyond their legal environment and thus based on their attitude and actions concerning social responsibility, organizations can be classified into four categories. So what are we considering here? We are considering the attitude of the organization and actions done by organizations. So how do we define it? These can be, now let us, we shall look at some examples from each of these four categories. What are these four categories? Legal and responsible, legal and irresponsible, illegal and responsible, while the last one is illegal and irresponsible actions. So here these four terms are the action part of it and these are the attitude part of the organization. Let us take examples of all the four. Legal and responsible action. In 1970s, Tata Group amended its articles of association to make the group always mindful of its social and ethical responsibilities to the customers, employees, stakeholders, society and local community at large. So this is an initiative taken which was a very mindful effort by the managers which was legal and responsible both. An example for legal and irresponsible action is advertisement of liquor companies to encourage liquor consumption. Now here advertising your product is quite legal there is no offense in that. But something producing something or promoting something which may cause a bad impact on the health of the society 
may be credited as an irresponsible behavior. Illegal and responsible behavior. Now, this is on December 1st, 2011, some Greenpeace activists, they dressed as tigers and they blocked the gate of Shastri Bhavan, which houses the minister of coal, demanding that forest in central India be saved from coal mining initiatives. So, this basically act is responsible because it, it was about the conservation of nature. But the way or the action which was done was not permitted. And finally, illegal and irresponsible action can be. An example is some dying units in Tirupur district of Tamil Nadu discharged their effluents directly into the earth by sinking pipes deep down the earth, thus causing large scale ground water pollution. So, students, I think with the help of these examples, you would have understood how the attitude of the organization and actions of organization can be categorized into various categories and which can help us understand that what are the necessary actions and steps the organizations must take to fulfill their corporate social responsibility. Moving further, let us try to understand the features of corporate social responsibility. As already discussed, features are generally the characteristics of any phenomena. So, the basic features of corporate social responsibility include the CSR is an obligation of organizations to society and its stakeholder. So, both the society and the stakeholders of organization expect something from the organization and that should be given back to the society. It involves the adoption of corporate behavior to meet the social needs and demands and thus render social justice. Now, this is an important point where we need to give back to the society whatever they are demanding from us, whatever they are expecting from us with a professional behavior on the part of the corporate. Corporate social responsibility also aimed at, aims at improving the quality of life of its stakeholders such as workers and their family members as well as local community. So, here the corporate houses may build up various amenities, maybe sanitation amenities or other amenities for their workers and local community. Organization can fulfill CSR for both business causes like building business profits and reputation and normative causes like meeting social expectations and norms. So, simultaneously organizations can build their profit as well as the organizations can have the er earning shared towards the society. When we talk about earning shared towards the society, they are also called as normative causes. CSR activities of an organization generally include donations, sponsorships, partnerships to no with non-profit organizations cause related marketing, promoting companies product as well as raising money for a common cause, investment in social responsibility related activities. So, generally organization perform these activities to reach to the masses. Let us now try to understand the historical background of CSR, how CSR has evolved over the four centuries starting from the 18th century to 21st century in contemporary times. Let us see and understand with the help of few examples that what organizations used to do in 18th century up till in today's time. Since CSR primarily deals with an organization's role and responsibility in protecting and promoting the interest of the society, thus and its members, its history can be traced back to the industrial revolution era. When industrial revolution arrived, it brought with its factories. These factories are actually centralized workplaces where unrelated people came together to work as a group. This has brought about tremendous change in social structure, communities and standard of living of people. 
From the beginning, CSR has travelled through different phases of history and now we shall go for a brief journey through different centuries to see the progress made by CSR over a period of time. Starting with CSR initiatives in the 18th century. During the 18th century, the great economist and philosopher Adam Smith suggested that the needs and desires of society could be met effectively through free interaction between individuals and organization, individuals in, and organizations in the marketplace. He further suggested that individuals acting in a self-interested manner would produce and deliver goods and services that not only earn from prof them a profit but also meet the needs of others. He also insisted that all marketplace participants should be just and honest. So this thought of Adam Smith proposed that there has to be a fair interaction with others. This period also saw some employee, employers executing some social welfare measures out of their own interest and humanitarian concerns. So these social welfare measures, one of the examples for such measure is companies like Cadbury and Roundtree constructed model villages for the benefit of employees and their family members. They also engaged industrial welfare workers to take care of the employee welfare. So you can see from the 18th century only the welfare measures had started off in the companies which are even renowned today. Moving on further to the next century that is 19th century. Now CSR is described as a baby of 19th century by some subject experts. This century witnessed the advent of new technologies. It has resulted in the creation of large number of jobs and improved living standards. With little or no government intervention, business houses flourished in many countries such as US and UK. Consequently, many industries, industrialists became very wealthy and they began to think in terms of giving back to the society. Now this because the industrialist had become wealthy and they thought of giving back to the society something from which they benefited. So as a result modern corporation commenced their CSR activities with a twin fold objective. The first objective was to express their gratitude back to the society and the second was investing for their future benefits. So these two fold reasons were for initiation of CSR activities and these two in turn took them to have good amount of goodwill from the society. So around this period employers such as Great Western Railways in UK and many other progressive employers viewed their business as big families and provided their employees with community facilities, good houses and libraries. So what we can say that this 19th century CSR initiatives were governed or helped by the new technologies, the living standards of the workers was enhanced and along with that large number of jobs were also created. With this the 19th century actually gave us the platform for the new age CSR activities. Moving further let us see how 20th century CSR activities were shaped. In 20th century has made important contributions to the growth of CSR. During this period the social responsibilities of business houses began to be formalized. Now these formalized and institutionalized social responsibilities were seen in various efforts. For instance, a Harvard, in Harvard Business School it offered its first course on ethics in 1915. 
Governments of various nations also established regulatory agencies for shaping CSR benchmarks and monitoring its implementation. Social issues like labor rights, occupational health and safety and women rights dominated the CSR practices during the 20th century. Besides consumer protection and education, child welfare, employment, environmental protection and corporate transparency also emerged as important themes of CSR in the latter half of this century. Towards the end of this century, that is the 20th century, some researchers conducted that the concept of CSR has not delivered as expected and has not found any positive relationship between CSR activities and the financial outcomes of the organization. So, this called for seeing on what happened in the 21st century. In 21st century, the social responsiveness of organization became social responsibility. In this century, CSR has emerged as a distinctive movement and a global issue. The strategic integration of CSR and business objectives and concerns is unique feature of today's 21st century initiatives. The 21st century in the 21st century, the globalization of economy has become a CSR mainstream activity from the earlier marginal interest activities. Business organizations have also replaced ad hoc initiatives and with concrete corporate plans. Strategic integration of CSR and business objectives together and concerns is the unique feature of this century. This is because entrepreneurs have realized in today's time that what is good for workers, their community, health and environment is also good for the business houses. Now, if we may recall, we already had discussed in the previous sessions about the human relations approach and human resource approach, where scientists like Hugo Munsterberg, Robert Owen, they have contributed in the field the importance of human resources in organization. And the same thing is being realized by the CSR initiatives in 21st century, where the focus is given on what is good for worker is good for the society at large. In India, corporations focus on social issues like ecological concerns, poverty, population growth, pollution, corruption, illiteracy as a part of their CSR agenda. One of the examples in India for CSR program can be Indian Oil Corporation. True to their mandate, public sector undertakings have been in the forefront of CSR initiative across. One of such example is Indian Oil Corporation. Indian Oil Corporation every year has been awarding petrol and diesel station dealerships and LPG distributorship to beneficiaries from among the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and physically handicapped, ex-servicemen, war widows etc. on priority basis. The CSR initiatives of Indian Oil Corporation also include medical and health camps on family planning, immunization, pulse polio, eye testing beyond financial considerations like profit making, blood donation, pre and postnatal care, homeopathic medicine, programs on AIDS awareness, etc. Also, they have initiated a 50 bed Swain Jayanti Samudayak Hospital and 200 bedded hospital set up in Assam Oil Division of IOCL at Digboy. So, however, CSR related mandatory regulations and laws are resented by some organizations on the ground that they impose unnecessary cost and also stifle competition and innovation. Similarly, lack of understanding, inadequate trained personnel, non-availability of authentic data in specific information on kinds of CSR activities required are some of the common problems that affect the reach and effectiveness of CSR programs in India. So, when it comes to inadequate 
trained personnel and lack of resources and lack of awareness, it is very important that the government system has to look into the matter that how organizations should be enforced to upskill and train their employees. Maybe the role of NGOs can be introduced or to be extended to a higher magnitude and resource availability to be made to the organization so that such initiatives are not stopped or halted. Let us now move on to CSR models. CSR models are of three types. First is socio-economic model, then we have stakeholder model and then triple bottom line model. When we talk about the socio-economic model, this model has the priority of profit making. So here the focus is that the business house has to make profit. While the second model that is the stakeholder model here the concerns of the stakeholder also has to be taken into consideration. The triple model that is the triple bottom line model talks about that we should not only be concerned about the socio-economic model but we should also be concerned about the stakeholder model simultaneously. So three types of performance to be considered at this point in time. What? The financial performance, the societal performance and the environmental performance. So triple bottom line is society, finances and environment all together these to be taken into consideration. Let us discuss these three CSR models in detail. Socioeconomic model maintains that only social responsibility of any business is to supply goods and services to the society at large and make the profit. The proponents of this model consider profit as the only criteria for measuring the efficiency of a business. They also tend to view the social involvement of business as an expense and overemphasis the cost of social involvement. While in the stakeholder model, it views business as part of a large society. So since business is a part of large society and besides achieving economical results which was the profit which was the main concern of socio-economic model, this stakeholder model also talks about the need fulfillment and requirement of stakeholders of the business. So their needs are also important in stakeholder model. So these stakeholder models are further of two types. So they can be market stakeholders or non-market stakeholder. Now what are these two types? When we talk about the market stakeholder types, it maintains direct economic transaction with the business. It includes employees, suppliers. So who are your direct stakeholders? Employees, suppliers, customers, they are your direct stakeholders and lending agencies also. In contrast, the non-market stakeholders do not engage in any kind of direct economic activity. So what are they? They can be NGOs, they can be pressure groups or they can be government agencies or they can be environmentalists. So they are not the ones who get directly affected or directly involved in any of the economic activity with the business house. So according to stakeholders model, managers must, must always remember that the success of company can be affected both positively and negatively by its stakeholders. Since the stakeholders can be precisely identified by the organization, their needs and requirements can effectively be considered while making the decisions. Now moving on to the third model that is the triple bottle line model. So according to this model, the success of business should be measured in terms of three categories that is financial success success with respect to society 
and success with respect to environment. So, this these three are called as triple bottom lines. Long term sustainable profit can be achieved only when a business firm pursues shared objectives in place of the single financial objective namely profit. So, the proponents of this model believe that a positive triple line triple bottom line. So, we need to have a positive triple bottom line performance can help the organization in many ways. For example, it can improve profitability, shareholders value, human capital, environmental capital, social capital of the company. Let us try to understand various three stage process of CSR. So, we have three stage processes of CSR which include commitment on the part of organization, strategy development for CSR and its implementation and control. Let us see one after the other. So, the CSR three stage process as we just now started explaining includes commitment, strategy development and implementation. This is usually carried out with the help of first thing that is commitment. Before committing itself to any CSR goal and strategy, it is essential for a manager to ascertain which is an important factor firm's philosophy. Now, what is firm's philosophy? This is governed by the leadership. What is leadership philosophy will be the firm's philosophy and is very essential ingredient to identify the commitment level of the organization towards the CSR. Not only the commitment level, but along with commitment level the attitude of the organization also towards the society. In this regard, they can check the vision and mission statement that usually state an organization's social and ethical concerns. So, the overall corporate objective can also help managers in understanding the firm's attitude and commitment towards the society. Further, many companies can also scan their external environments to recognize the challenges which are posed in the form of threats outside their environment likely to damage firm's reputation or government intervention. Along with threats, they should also identify the opportunities in the external environment. This can be employee motivation or increase in the resources. So, the commitment is the first stage that lets us understand that to what extent an organization is ready for CSR. So, CSR readiness formula you can say, CSR readiness formula is first stage commitment. Along with this an example for commitment can be if in the absence of civic amenities and poor infrastructure facilities, high illiteracy and corruption, malnutrition and gender inequality, pollution and poverty are true examples for societal problems and these problems may or may not be the outcome of organizational activities. But for instance, emission by company's factory may pollute the air and water resources of its neighboring locality. So, in contrast to societal issues like gender inequality and illiteracy may exist independent of company's actions and that company can think of how they can improve upon those actions. Once broader societal problems are identified, company should choose the specific issues to be addressed. Maybe a company can choose an issue to address of high female illiteracy. By funding women specific educational activities, firms normally commit themselves by openly acknowledging the existence of problems and their responsibility in resolving them. But sometimes company may feel it necessary to incorporate their social responsibilities in corporate objectives, vision, mission statements as a way of acknowledging them. And when the company acknowledges their statement of CSR in their own vision and mission statement that shows a high amount of strong commitment of that particular organization 
towards the society and here the organization can have programs for education in the evening schools they can also see to it that how women empowerment can be enhanced how the earning powers of women can be enhanced by opening up of some skill center for them once the organization has shown up the commitment that is the attitude towards upliftment of society then second phase or the stage of csr is the strategy formulation so this is the strategy development in strategy development in this phase the csr commitment of company takes a concrete shape the firm now develops precise strategy for fulfilling its commitment while doing so it normally takes into consideration the stakeholder priorities nature and intensity of the issue methods of support required and existing practices and policies at this stage companies usually develop something called as mid term or long term plans for strategizing and these plans and programs have some specific targets they also mobilize necessary resources and prepare the exact procedure to be followed for implementation wherever possible companies also integrate their csr activities along with their research and development activities and along with that they also take in, into consideration that what long term strategy they are planning for themselves if they are planning expansion strategy diversification strategy or they are planning for some kind of horizontal integration backward or forward they take all these decisions into consideration while thinking of or strategizing for what implementations to be made for csr initiatives once they have developed the strategy for their csr the next stage or the final stages of implementation and control as we all understand that implementation phase is the most difficult phase we can always pen down all rules and regulations and plans on paper but when it comes to actually organizing and implementing it in real world lots of challenges crop up so in this phase of implementation and control process the organizations have to be highly sensitized about the challenges which they may face while they are incorporating the csr activities towards societal benefit so what all incorporates the implementation and control phase it includes the crucial stage and at this phase the plans and proposed activities are communicated to the stakeholders effective involvement of stakeholders like target groups are achieved through continuous dialogue so the ultimate outcome of any successful csr practice is manifold it typically benefits both society and the company so for instance the society may become a better place to live in with corporate intervention the company may also gain in terms of increased goodwill public image and better acceptability of the company and its products by public since csr entails resources and is required a com continuous commitment it is absolutely necessary for companies to monitor all the phases of csr activities so carefully and thoroughly this control process has to be taken this control process includes necessary feedback from all the stakeholders and this feedback enables the organization to find out any gap in the performances while implementing or executing or planning the csr activity also to make sure during this evaluation process that all the policies have been implemented in right spirit that the way they were framed or they were thought of next let us talk about managers responsibility towards society so when it comes to managers responsibility towards society the very first thing is the responsibility towards the owners owner is the primarily an economic responsibility so managers are expected to operate the business in such a way that the owners and shareholders get adequate return from the business so that is the commitment of the manager towards his work in a manner that profit is earned 
once such commitment is done the responsibility of manager towards the owner is fulfilled further the quantum of profit so what is the magnitude of profit earned in the business should be in proportion to the risk level of the business they must also ensure that the assets of the business are optimally utilized and protected managers must also present a true picture of the company's position to the owner now when we talk about the true picture it is very much necessary that transparency is maintained with the owners with respect to what is happening in the business financial statements they should also treat equally the different category of owners like equity shareholders preference shareholders and debentures managers should always keep in mind the stability of business enterprise while making decisions they must also make sure that organization continuously grows and the owners gain from such growth is there in brief owners must have capital protection and profit maximization this is the responsibility of manager towards the owner along with this access to accurate information and equality in treatment is expected by the manager after responsibility towards the owner the responsibility of manager is towards the employees now when we talk about the responsibility of manager towards the employee the first connotation is the economic responsibility economic responsibility means that the manager has to sufficiently provide the right kind of wages and compensation to the employees and along with that fair and just equitable and ethical behavior to be conducted with the employee so further what responsibility of manager towards the employee connotes foremost the manager must provide adequate monetary and non monetary rewards for the work done by the employees they should also ensure that employee selection and promotion processes are just and fair employee must be given sufficient opportunities for learning through educational and training programs at company's expenses employees must also have individual dignity job security job autonomy psychological support and opportunities for participation in management process managers must ensure clean pleasant and healthy working conditions for employees they should evaluate employee performance systematically and objectively so in nutshell we can say that employees should have job security should have right kind of remuneration and must have a fair and just performance evaluation and finally healthy and safe working conditions if a manager is able to provide all these things to the employee then his responsibility towards the employee is sufficiently covered after employee comes the manager's responsibility towards the consumer when it comes to consumer manager must make available adequate quantity of desired quality goods and services at reasonable rates to the customer they must also provide prompt dependable and courteous service to their customer the support of customer is very much critical for any business house and survival and growth of that business so thus manager must have some vital responsibilities towards the consumers they must provide effective after sale service so this is something which adds on to the goodwill of the organization the brand image of organization they should also attend the customer complaints promptly and sincerely managers should desist from unfair trade practices such as hoarding adulteration black marketing etc in short consumers must have products in desired quality and quantity products should be fair and just prices and efficient after sales service 
prompt response to their complaints. After the responsibility towards the consumer, the responsibility of manager is towards the government. The government says that uh, the responsibility towards the government of manager says that the manager has to work within the given statutory guidelines and the legal framework. So, the constitution and gazette notif through gazette notification various legal reforms or legal notifications or industrial laws are already in place that the manager has to follow. For example, the Factories Act 1948 talks about health, safety and welfare conditions of the workers. The Payment of Bonus Act, the Payment of Wages Act, Employee uh, Workers Compensation Act 1923, all these acts help the manager to find out the right kind of legislative procedures to be adopted at the organizational level. So, the primary responsibility of manager is to ensure that operations of the business are carried out well within the legal framework as specified by the government. And here manager must respect the specific rules, guidelines, regulations, norms laid down by government from time to time. Further, they should pay all the taxes, dues and duties payable to the government fairly and regularly. They should also furnish statutory information about the company like copy of balance sheet, true and fair manner to the registrar of the company. In brief, their responsibilities are first to observe all rules and regulations. Second, they have to pay the taxes and all duties and then finally, furnish all true information. This is the manager's responsibility towards the government. And then finally comes the responsibility of the management or the manager towards the general public. When it comes to general public, the manager has to gain the confidence of the general public through their actions. The manager has to see that they are giving back to the society what is expected. So, the goodwill and positive business image is to be created in terms of the responsibility of manager towards the general public. Also to see to it that the CSR initiatives which pertain to civic amenities and welfare of society are well taken care by the manager. Further. They must learn to respect the sentiments, beliefs, values and ethos of people in the community in which the organization is established. They should care for the health and safety of public in general and the neighbors in particular. For instance, an example from Indian company is Tata Steel educates people about leprosy through advertisements in newspapers and magazines as a part of its health awareness program. Organizations have the responsibility of improving the quality of life of people who live within their normal areas of operations. And now, students, the responsibility of manager towards something which is the utmost important feature. The manager has to take care of conserving the nature which is in the hands of all mankind. We have to look into matters like global warming and ozone layer depletion, deforestation. All these issues are very important concerns as they disturb the food chain. And once it is disturbed, they bring in changes into the geographical weather patterns, which in turn affects the human body in terms of its survival. So, we need to see very seriously that how all these issues and concerns are because of the organizational working pattern and what patterns to be eliminated from the organizational functioning so as to reduce these ill effects towards the nature at large. So, when we talk about responsibility towards nature, it is preserving the nature because the climate change is an important ingredient to it. 
In this regard, organizations must, must socially be more responsible in their release of pollutants that can affect air, water, land, etc. Managers should also desist from activities that can harm the flora and fauna and animals and human life. Further, they should avoid activities that cause destruction of heritage structures such as historical buildings and monuments. Now, let us move on to the challenges which the managers face in implementation of CSR activities. So, when it comes to challenges, usually CSR has different meaning for different managers depending on their organizational philosophy, attitude, environment and nature of stakeholders. But, but many managerial experts and sociologists have begun to accept CSR as effective tool to achieve triple objectives of profit, environmental protection. and third objective that is the social benefit or social equality. So, they are also of the opinion that importance of CSR has increased as never before and following factors are the ones which have enhanced the importance of CSR. What are the following factors? The limited state resources increased stakeholder interest in organizations, social and ethical responsibilities and mandatory need for greater corporate disclosure. Let us now take up one after the other issues or challenges in adoption of CSR. Now, when it comes to absence of active community involvement in CSR activities. So, the following factors have resulted in poor patronage of CSR in public participation. Poor communication between the sponsoring agency and members of communities at a survey conducted by the grassroots level. So, there is no public awareness about the role and awareness about the CSR with respect to community development. Second is absence of local capacities and well organized C NGOs. Since the organizations do not generally directly deal with the society, it is in between the NGOs which play a major role of a link pin or connect, who in turn does all the activities for the organizations. Now, due to lack of awareness and training amongst the NGOs or maybe lack of resources on the part of NGOs, there is a possibility that the absence of local capacity is not there. So, capacity building on the part of NGO is much required to have proper initiatives of CSR communicated to the society. Lack of transparency is another issue that needs to be addressed. So, transparency in terms of resource utilization and the existing programs of the corporate. Perceptual difference between various stakeholders of the society. So, this can be either the NGOs, the communities at large that people have different approaches or different perception towards the CSR initiatives, which can become a challenge for the society. Lack of clear cut guidelines and policies implementation on the part of the organization. So, when more than one company undertakes CSR activities in same area, there may be possibility that duplication of activity takes place. Thus, it is it results in wastage of resources and also causes difficulties in assessing the real impact of csr initiative on the uh, on csr initiative so that is absence of cohesive approach when more than two organizations go for csr implementation it leads to chaos amongst the implemented part and we cannot judge what which initiated cause what kind of outcome and finally tendency to gain quick popularity. So, NGOs and local agencies involved in CSR initiative at times engage in event based program, which is just to gain media popularity. So, for this case, if the CSR is done, then it is a challenge and it is not done as in a spirit and thus we cannot get the right kind of outcome. So, finally, when we come to the conclusion of this particular session which talks about that through better strategies and sustained interest 
with concrete actions the companies can overcome the challenges in implementation of csr initiatives companies should realize that the successful discharge of their social responsibility will get them these benefits what are the benefits they will have improved public acceptance a very good brand image and reputation they will have higher sales and higher customer loyalty their increased ability to attract and retain efficient workforce which is much needed and better recognition and patronage from the capital holders so i hope students you have now understood the basic concept of corporate social responsibility csr which is the responsibility how managers have different uh, responsibilities in their portfolio and how csr initiatives or challenges are uh, initiatives face certain challenges which can be overcome different models of csr and the processes and stages of csr with this i conclude this session on social responsibility of managers thank you